The perfect headphone doesn't exist. Not even your thousand dollar plus super luxury headphones that you hide from your spouse and only use them when she or he isn't around. So what's the problem? I'm going to summarize three. Firstly, frequency response. I think you knew that was coming. Any item of audio equipment should have, or at least have available, a flat or near flat frequency response. Anything purely electronic or digital certainly will. Anything electromechanical, like a speaker, and of course a headphone, certainly will not. A quick throw in that I'll cover in detail in a future video. A headphone maybe shouldn't have a flat frequency response, but a response tailored to the Harman curve, or maybe the B and K curve, or maybe some other curve that boffins think we'll appreciate better than flat. Laters for that. But whatever curve a headphone designer would like to achieve, well, they're dealing with the real world of metals and plastics vibrating into your ears, and maybe even real wood outer shells. Oh, and don't forget the blend of nitrogen, oxygen, and increasing amounts of CO2 between the drivers and your ears. Perfection might be the goal, but can it ever be reached? Then there's perspective. I think we all know that listening on headphones is nothing like anything we'd hear naturally in what I like to call real life. Yes, it can be very pleasant, but suppose there's a guitar panned all the way left in the recording. You hear it in your left ear only, and maybe a bit that's passed through your head striking your right eardrum from behind. Natural? Come on, it's nothing like it. Listening to a real band or on speakers? Yes, the guitar comes from the left, but you hear it in your right ear too, at a lower level and different frequency balance shadowed by your head, and of course a little later, which is important for direction localization. Headphones? None of this. Problem number three, and if I had a cat, it would probably be trying to get among some pigeons right now. All headphone amplifiers are different, in subtle ways in many respects, but in a huge way when the output impedance is significantly higher than near zero. Who's to say that your headphone amplifier will drive your headphones properly? I know I'm talking about headphones, but there's an interesting comparison with speakers. As you know, there are passive speakers and active speakers with an internal power amplifier. All speakers, all sensible speakers, have crossovers between the two or more drive units, separating out the frequency bands. But again, speaker drive units are devices functioning in the real world and are bound to have frequency response anomalies. Yes, the crossover can be designed to compensate to an extent, but working at a high power level isn't the easiest or best way. An active speaker, however, can correct, or at least ameliorate, any frequency response issues at line level, or even in DSP, before the power amp section. This has the potential to be much more sophisticated and much more accurate. And so we have the question, why don't we have active headphones? Headphones don't need a crossover, well, most do not, but why don't we use active electronics to perfect the response of these electromechanical devices? The IK Multimedia ARC on ear, ARC standing for Advanced Room Correction, is a tiny box that will fix your headphones. Even your thousand dollar plus headphones like Hi-Fi Man, Audacy, Focal brands, or AKG, Bayer Dynamic, Sennheiser, if you're more studio orientated. More than 200 headphone models in the 0.4.8 software I have today. And the list is apparently going to get even longer. ARC, standing for Advanced Room Correction, as in IK Multimedia's Arc X software and Arc Studio hardware, will ameliorate problems with your speakers and room acoustics. I've made a video on that and I've linked in the description. Granted, there's nothing that will totally fix your room other than acoustic treatment, but speaker correction and room correction can work wonders. And I'd recommend taking a look and give it a try if you can. With headphones though, there's no problem with room correction to be solved. In fact, it's the other way around. Normal headphone listening doesn't feel like you're in a room at all. So as well as correcting any frequency response issues, the ARC on ear will give you a lovely virtual room to listen in. Let's take a look at what's going on. The ARC on ear hardware is a tiny but substantial box that will sit on your desk or your side table where you rest your beer while you're listening. It has an internal battery, so you're mobile if you want to be. Your source will be either USB-C from your computer or any other device that can output audio in that form, or good old analog audio through a mini jack 
input. Output will be through a traditional quarter inch jack, yay! Although I have to note that some audiophiles might perhaps be disappointed by the lack of a 4.4mm balanced connection. And a great big digitally controlled analogue volume control. What more could you want? There are three buttons also that relate to the software, so I'll cover them in a bit. I could run through some specs, but I suspect you know how to pause a video. OK, some important points. I see impedances mentioned down to 16 ohms. You know, 8 ohm headphones are quite common these days. And although headphone amps are commonly OK with it, I'd like to see confirmation in the specs. But my favourite spec here, zero impedance output design. I imagine this means a very low output impedance. Low output impedance is important in a traditional headphone amplifier to maintain a flat frequency response with headphones whose impedance varies with frequency. Maybe the arc on ears corrections handle this, making the output behave like it's zero. I'll leave a question mark as to how that works. One more. I said that a headphone could respond differently to different headphone amps. Well, not in this case, because according to IK Multimedia's press release, the modelling was done through the output circuitry of the ARC on ear. So not only is the specific model of your headphone compensated for, so is the headphone amp in the on ear. Don't be afraid, there's nothing to hurt you here. Yes, you will need to set up the ARC on ear with a computer. But once you've done that, you don't need the software again, unless and until you want to change something. Upgrade your headphones, perhaps? But perhaps you won't need to. I'll be quick. I'm on early version software at the moment, by the way, so you can expect production software to be slightly different in places. This is where you'll start, or at least this is where the software opens for me, after tinkering with it for some time and messing with the preferences. The top section is a graphic representing the virtual room you'd be listening in. I'll click over to Frequency Response because I think the information is more meaningful. So what I have is the headphone model, which presently is the One Audio Monitor 60, a cheap and cheerful model at less than $100. Why this? Well, I have seven, I think, pairs of headphones, and at present this is the only pair that I have that the ARC on ear handles. That's a bit of a shame, because if I had two pairs from the list, I could have compared how similar the on-ear makes them to be. But even so, I can comment on what improvement, if any, I get. That's for later. I'll just quickly click over to Headphone Selection, where there's a long list of the 200 plus models available, more to come, so I'm told, and useful graphic representations. I notice where it says Impedance, the list goes down to 13 ohms, which is rather lower than the 16 mentioned in the spec, which is good. That, by the way, would be the Dan Clark Audio Noir X, I think, a cent less than a USD grand. Going back to the main screen, we see what I presume is the frequency response of the headphone in question. The manual is, I'm afraid, rather sparse as yet in its very early version. But this is what would make sense to me. So all you have to do to flatten this curve or at least conform it to what IK Multimedia thinks is right, is click Calibration On. You can do this on the unit as well. But then you have things you can adjust to your taste. You'll notice three controls along the frequency line, maybe set to something crazy, like I've done here. One thing I noticed is that there doesn't seem to be a simple way to reset them to default. Often in software, this is just Option or Alt click. Next software revision, perhaps? But that's not all. There's a tone control. Wow, that's retro. It's really quite subtle in its effect, but subtlety is often all that's needed. I like it as an extra way to customise the sound. Phase align, well, that seems to be a choice between minimum phase and linear phase. That's a whole other thing. I've linked a video in the description that I made sometime back in the 19th century. The audio demonstrations will be useful. Now, studio simulation. So you're in a room, not sandwiched between a pair of headphone earpads. With virtual speakers disabled, the studio simulation recreates the experience of virtually ideal speakers without any coloration or character layered on top. That's a quote. You'd be right to be sceptical. Often I feel that this kind of processing makes the audio sound messed about rather than better. But I had a good play with it, with different music against the width control which audio files will note significantly affects the sound stage. Often when I'd found a good setting, switching it out wasn't as good. Too wide of a sound stage for headphones. I'd say that this is a good option. 
you can take it all the way to mono if you want. Oh, and the other way to 200%. Super wide stereo, if I can call it that, is easily enough achieved in software using MS technique, but it usually sounds dreadfully phasey. But this sounds okay. I think it's probably best to ignore the percentage and just set it how you like. Did I say that the arc on ear seems more angled to the studio than to hi-fi? I don't think I did. But well, yes, it does. But that makes it more fun, doesn't it? And this is where we get to virtual speakers. And looky here, my favourite 1990s white coned passive studio monitors, just like my Yamaha NS10M studios. My two pairs of Yamaha NS10M studios. One upstairs, one down. Let's switch them in. OMG, as I've heard the young people say. So we see the before and after with the notoriously unflat curve of the Yamahas. OK, so I've compared the simulation with the real thing. Considering that my real speakers are in my real, rather small and inadequate room, I'd say close. Close enough anyway for a producer to get a feel of how their work sounds on small, rather unflat speakers. And there are at present 25 models of speaker, more studio than hi-fi, but all offering interesting listening perspectives. I mentioned the three buttons on the hardware earlier, so you can switch the calibration in or out, which is nice to see if you're getting an improvement. Although beware any level change, because louder can always seem seductively better, even if it isn't. Studio simulation in or out is useful too, and I really quite like the studio sound, where I thought I wouldn't. The third button has a programmable function with, as you can see, seven options. I rather like play pause, which works nicely with my computer. There's an additional button press combination. Hold the function button and press cal to get five different presets that you've created in the software for your five different headphones. This is a good question. I've been trying out the Arc on ear with an inexpensive headphone, less than 100 USD. Pricing for the on ear is 299.99 USD or Euro, with an introductory price of 249.99. So I might alternatively have bought a pair of $400 headphones, or maybe I have a $1,000 pair of headphones, which I do, but unfortunately it isn't yet in the list. But will an extra 300 correct efficiencies that really, for $1,000, shouldn't be there? But then again, it isn't just the correction you're getting, it's the studio simulation. Call it room simulation, if you prefer. And I like it. Going forward, I hope to see some of the headphones, the higher quality headphones, that I have myself among the models. Then I can properly make a judgement according to my own needs. Oh, and over a range of music, the One Audio headphones did, to me sound better. As for now, as for you, I recommend gathering all the information you can, check out other reviews and get a demonstration if possible. I think that headphone correction with room and speaker simulation is a fascinating concept and the arc on ear is an excellent implementation. For audiophiles out there, I'd say that this will make far more of a difference to your listening experience than any DAC. Oh, it is a DAC. See you soon.